Did you know we grow our own jellies at Georgia Aquarium? Welcome to a day in the life of our jelly aquarists on our aquatic sustainability team. Pretty much all the jellies you see on the rainbow jelly wall in our two habitats in Tropical Diver were grown by one of our teams. At our off-site facility, we have an entire area dedicated to growing jellies from little polyps all the way to full-grown jellies. It's so dedicated that our teams even design their own tanks to get better flow to jellies. One of the many things growing jellies need are brine shrimp. You guessed it, we also grow that ourselves. We have these giant vats, if you will, where brine shrimp are able to live and grow and reproduce in. Once it's ready to go, then we drain out the brine shrimp, and we stick in this metal rod to collect cysts, or basically eggshells, from where the brine shrimp hatched from. Those cysts have no nutritional value for the jelly, so there's no need to keep them in there. It's just like keeping eggshells in your eggs. Nobody wants that. Once the cysts have been separated from all of the healthy brine shrimp, then we're able to put it back into a smaller vat. Then they pour out the food from there to go feed the different jellies. All different stages of life jellies get fed the brine shrimp, whether they are polyps or fully grown or anywhere in between. Fun fact, the moon jellies turn orange when they eat. So in order to keep growing your own jelly species, that requires, you know, reproduction. Those four ovals located in the center of the jelly, those are actually the reproductive organs. Unlike a lot of animal species, there aren't exactly very easy ways to tell what their gender may be, so we actually need to use microscopes. Typically, jellies will release free-swimming larvae into the ocean that will develop into polyps. In an aquarium environment, we are able to take those larvae out and help them develop on their own as polyps. In order to keep genetic diversity, we actually share polyps with other zoos and aquariums around the U.S. The less glamorous but equally as important part of their day is cleaning. Tanks can develop a lot of algae growth, so they go in and physically scrub it out. The jellies also leave behind droplets of their brine shrimp, so we actually siphon that out. There isn't a lot of suction pressure, so no worries, the jellies are completely safe. Remember the developing polyps I mentioned earlier? They are given flat surfaces to grow on and develop, so we actually have to go in and clean in between each individual polyp to make sure it has enough space and enough healthy area to grow as strong and as big as they can. Thanks for joining us for a day in the life of the Jelly Aquarist on our aquatic sustainability team at Georgia Aquarium.